Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. This is so, so fun. I have so many questions for you because I have followed your career. Um, I watched you when you were on Gossip Girl. I remember you on Melrose Place. I remember so many of the shows you've done. And one of the things that strikes me about your career is that you have worked on hit shows steadily for years. Can you talk about what it takes to have that kind of success over time in, in the industry? Because I know that it's not that easy. I believe it's just trusting, trusting the universe, you know, that the things that you get, you're supposed to get and the things that you don't, you're not. And, you know, there's so many times that I thought I wanted to work on a certain show and maybe something else came up and I got that first or something. And I was always so thankful because if I look back, I think, oh, wow, I was really guided there. So yeah. I think a lot of it's just trusting. You'll, you'll be where you're supposed to be. So trusting in sort of that, the, the higher power that it's all, it's kind of going to work out as it should. Is that? Well, yeah. But it, I mean, it's a co-creation, all of it, right? We can't just walk around saying, okay, everything's going to just, it's a co-creation. So it's saying wanting to align with my highest message, my highest good, what I'm here to do, you know, um, you know, it, it, to really align with your energy and where you are. And I've noticed that that happens a lot in terms of the roles I get too. So it's, it's funny how the right role shows up at the right time based on my frequency and what's going on with me and needs to be expressed. So that's what I mean. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean you don't have goals or focus or think about what type of roles you want to do. You know, it's just also trusting. How did you get started? I mean, did you know, did you always know from when you were a little girl that you wanted to be um, an actress? Like, can you talk a little bit about, you know, where that desire came from, how early and then how you got started? Yeah, I just never felt like I fit into a certain thing, right? So it was a process of elimination. It was sort of what what can I do that I'll be fulfilled? I didn't want to go to college. Mm. Um much to my parents' dismay, but I didn't want to go to college. I wanted to get out and start making money and have my own business on some level. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot, a lot, a lot of young people do, but yeah. they sort of have to follow along, go to college. Otherwise, you know, their parents will disown them or they just feel like they aren't enough. Um, and I think that's going to change a lot in the future. <laughs> and I think, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, for many reasons, that's going to change. I think what work is going to look like, businesses are going to look like, are, are shifting. Yeah. So, and I think college, you know, is a great thing. But for me, I, I just didn't feel like it was for me. So that was part of it. And then I mm -hmm. thought, well, what would I be fulfilled doing for, for a long time? I love psychology. I loved international relations. I love law. I mean, I like the ideas of all these things. Uh, and so my mom had suggested that I take a class while I was in New York and, um, and I just loved it. So. And how, wh how old were you at that time? You weren't very young or when that happened, it was kind of. No, I was at 17. I graduated from high school and I moved to New York to study acting. Mm -hmm. And, um, before that, I mean, I did a little bit in high school, but I didn't take it that seriously. I certainly wasn't thinking of it as a career then, you know. And in terms of you know, the, your, your career itself, um, was there, is there anything that you feel like has been really a sort of standout moment for you? One that you feel like, wow, I'm really proud of this work, uh, in terms of, you know, what you got to do and, and how you were able to express yourself. Yeah. It, it, it feels like it started to make sense, like around home front and Briscoe County junior. Mm -hmm. Um, before that, you know, I did a soap when I was like 20, I just turned 20 when I booked a soap and I did that for 18 months. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was, it was so enjoyable, but it was also like training. It was literally acting boot camp for me because mm -hmm. I hadn't really done much before. And then you're thrown into doing 50 pages a day. You know, it's like I was studying for my exams every day, like my friends were studying for theirs. So, you know, mm -hmm. sort of, mm -hmm. and having to do that every day uh, five days a week and then press on the weekend. So it was super, you know, kind of, it was such a great 
opportunity to train. And um, so, yeah, but then I finally, I feel like things finally started to, to feel, you know, um, to make sense around Homefront and, and Briscoe County Junior. And what was it about those shows that clicked for you? I just started having more fun. You know, I think like any business, you know, when you can finally start to have fun doing it and you're not so stressed or worried about what everyone thinks or, you know, and you can kind of own your own creativity. Yeah. And, and in terms of the process of acting in general, because I feel like there are, we have um, a lot of people who listen to the show who are maybe on the earlier side of, you know, just really starting their careers. And it's a very popular area. People want to get into the entertainment industry. What do you think is the right sort of way, like skill set? Like what does someone really need to know and be good at, do you think, to have a long lasting career in the entertainment business on, you know, being an actor or actress? Mm. I think you have to have a lot of outside interests. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I know mm -hmm. that sounds weird, but I think to have a lot of things you love to do outside of acting. Mm -hmm. because all of those things give you what you need to be able to do the acting, right? Because if your whole world now is focused on just acting, then what do you have to bring to the party? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because acting is about taking things from life, understanding people, understanding why we do what we do, um, or partially, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also the different aspects that you're interested in. So, you know, even though you, let's say you're an actor, you may be really interested in directing or writing or, or collaborating with someone who is a writer, who is a director and creating your own, your, your own content, as we say today. So creating your own uh, things is really, I think, the most powerful way to go through this business is to be a creator, not just sort of on the receiving end of like waiting for the phone to ring. Um, although, you know, if, if you've got a great agent, that's that works fine. But, you know. And also getting out and, 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 and yeah, just meeting interesting people doing interesting things and yeah, buying, you know, buying books, you know, whatever it is that you're, you know, interested in and, and the collaboration, I think I caught on to really late, um, which is just, you know, create co-creating with other actors or, or other writers. Yeah. Well, you, you actually had the opportunity. I know you, you um, have the opportunity to work with Jason Priestley. Now, you guys were not on, I, I guess he was was on a show, was on, you were on Melrose, Melrose Place at the time, but you guys did not work together, but you worked together more recently, right? Yes. And how was is, how is that experience? Uh, did you guys know each other back in the day and then reconnect and co-create together back, uh, you know, more recently? Well, I would see him at press things. You know, we were on like obviously parallel shows, um, Aaron Spelling shows. Um, so I would see him occasionally at press things, but I didn't know him that well. It was just sort of like we were all there doing press and, you know, um, so it was so wonderful to work with him and see how he's really crafted a career um, uh, of directing. I mean, he's mm -hmm. a wonderful director. He directed one of the um, one of the episodes that we did mm -hmm. and um, he was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the idea of, you know, you being in this business and the the balancing of, you know, you become a public personality. Can you talk a little bit about how that has impacted you? Because there is just so much focus on actors um, and so much interest in, in your lives and your personal lives. How do you manage that? How do you manage the interest in your personal life? Well, I'm fortunate because I literally go to work and, and I come home and then I don't think about it. Like I'm not caught up in, in my business very much. I probably should be more, but, um, and I was when I was younger. I mean, you know, maybe for the first you know, 20 years, which is like how long I've been doing this forever. But for the, in the beginning, I was much more involved in the day to day of, of our, my business. Right. And then I realized that, you know, it was just better for me to go away, live my life and not think about it too much. Cause I felt like I had more to bring back. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So 
I, I really don't think about it much. You know, I think it's just normal. It becomes, unless you're like, I think an overnight success or something where you can't literally walk out your door the next day. I mean, that's gotta be a very different experience. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was been, it's been so gradual in my career mm -hmm. that, that it's just been, I think I've just become, it's become normal to me. And mm -hmm. everyone's so nice. I mean, it's usually like young teen girls and their moms you know, <laughs> that come up to me. So I'm always so happy. And everyone's so nice and, you know, so it's, um, it, yeah, it's pretty normal. I don't think well, about it. And you have a whole, you're almost bringing along a whole new generation of fans because Gossip Girl is relatively newly available, right? On net, is Netflix it's available on? One of the streaming yeah. services? It's been on Netflix for a while, almost since it ended. It's been, you know, oh. within I think the year or something, it was on Netflix um I, I don't know if it was netflix but it definitely was streaming somewhere i don't know mm -hmm. exactly but it's been on netflix and i think now i don't know i think they're i don't know if they're going to renew it but yeah it's been on netflix for quite a while well you know it's interesting because i have a 13 year old daughter and she is she came to me a couple of weeks ago and she's like have you ever heard of this show gossip girl it's so great and i thought Aww. you know that it's so interesting how the you know the shows are kind of making you you kind of become uh relevant to a whole new generation of of people which is kind of, it's amazing i mean the work sort of lives on which must be a very satisfying and gratifying feeling to have that out there Oh, it's been such a blessing. I mean, to do a show and have one generation watch it, whatever, 10 years ago, and then have their younger sisters and brothers now watching it for the last 10 years. I mean, that's so rare. Yeah. And so it, it really is a blessing and, and a testament to the writers and creators and, you know, of the show to, yeah. to create such a fun show. Yeah. So we met, we talked a little bit about what it's like to have the, the sort of public interest in your life. And I know you had got, you've gone through a custody battle that was quite public in terms of the press. Um, in terms of that experience, how has just that experience kind of impacted the the way you approach life because it was um you know an intense i, I know and difficult experience yeah um i think any any time you go through something super challenging that you um you're just you you definitely come out changed i mean you definitely come out stronger and more resilient um and you, know, you have a different perspective of life. You just view things somewhat, you know, different. And we all go through challenges. That's what you realize too, is that, you know, mm -hmm. we each have our own unique challenges in life, but we all have them on some, some level. And mm -hmm. um, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like the great leveler, you know, you just go, okay, I'm human. I'm having mm -hmm. my challenge, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I certainly didn't feel like I even was at all prepared or had the skill set to deal with it when it happened certainly i felt mm -hmm. so unprepared and like unsure of how to handle any of it um mm -hmm. because i just didn't know that type of thing even existed it wasn't even in my realm of possibility that something mm -hmm. like that and at that time could happen you know it was just mm -hmm. so bizarre um yeah. so it was one of those things where you're you're going through it and experiencing it at the same time just thinking is this even real? I mean, is this even happening? It's almost like an altered state, you know, which I think we all feel when we have things happen in our lives that shake us up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I think ultimately, you know, you, you think, okay, <laughs> I'm either going to give up and become a victim and mm -hmm. not that, you know, you don't have your pity parties and have your moments, a lot of them and make mistakes and, you know, um, but I think the, the thing that, you know, gets us through is being able to to shift the narrative for ourselves in these situations where, mm -hmm. you know, you don't come out of it a victim, you come out of it, you know, educated and awake mm -hmm. and aware of, mm -hmm. of things you may not have known that existed. And you realize, wow, I need to, to hold space for others because, um, 
because that's my job. I, I wouldn't yeah. be doing what I was doing in the profession I'm doing unless that's, you know, was part of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kip, you have, you, you, you know, as you're talking, you, you cut, you strike me as someone who has a very high level of self-awareness and sort of really thinks about, you know, contemplates what drives you and, and, and how, how, what things mean in your life. I think a lot of women tell us that they really struggle with self-awareness. Do you have any advice or tips a, a give a daily practice that helps you on that front that you could share? Yes. Um, we're told that love is outside of us. We're told that it's in our relationships. We're told that, you know, we're basically, I mean, I don't know if that seems to be the program, right? Is that we're not all overflowing with love, right? <laughs> we're looking for it outside of us all the time. You know, we want acceptance from the man in our life or from people at work or this or that. So I think the sooner we can um, realize that love is universal, it's abundant, it is within us, and mm -hmm. that um, people show up to meet whatever love that you are generating, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not generating any, because you're not aware that it's there, that that's where it originates from, mm -hmm. then you're going to have experiences that try to show you, <laughs> go mm -hmm. within, go within, find it, that's your strength. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, particularly men and women have gone through this where, you know, we, we're just seeking it constantly outside. And the mm -hmm. sooner we realize that we need to get quiet, light that candle, take that bath, write our affirmations, shift mm -hmm. the narrative from, you know, needing an outside, um, thing it, it's it your life you become more powerful and in 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 your radiance in that part of, of knowingness you attract a very different thing and you're choosing differently so there's something i think tracy ellis ross had on her instagram and it was i'm paraphrasing but something to the effect of we need to start seeing instead of trying to figure out how we're being seen Mm -hmm. So as women, in particular, because that's what we're talking about, we're talking about now, it's, you know, who is this person? What is this job? And does it resonate with me? Do mm -hmm. I feel comfortable doing this? Do I feel comfortable with this person? I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. It's not about being chosen. It's not about being looking, being a perfect way for someone. Um, it's saying, I... I am okay for me and I'm fine with that and I'm enjoying my time and I'm doing the, the work that I love and the friends in my life I love and I've got support around me and a great team. Um, and the more we focus on what we love and do what we love and talk about what we love and look for things that we love, mm -hmm. um, the more we manifest those other things. And it's kind of what I was saying in the beginning about trusting the universe because if you're doing mm -hmm. your your calibrating your work then the other things sort of align naturally you don't have to overthink it do you know yeah what do you think your superpower is oh it's love for sure it's always love with everyone <laughs> yeah do you um so i know that you also spend um a, a time as a you know, as someone who's involved with charities, um, you are involved actually in one that is near and dear to my heart. I used to uh, be on the board of Step Up New York City, and I know you're you're involved with that. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that means for you, uh, being involved like in an organization with an organization like Step Up? Well, it's interesting because I was on the board, the original board in L.A., yeah. And I had never done anything like that. I had never really gotten involved on that level. I mean, I'd come as a as an actor to support or raise awareness, but I'd never gotten that involved in a charity. And um, a few of my friends were doing it and asked me to get involved. And it was so healing to me on so many levels and so rich for me. I mean, it was selfishly 
it was such an incredible experience to be around all these women that were supporting each other, you know, using each other as resources, you know, networking in a way that I had never really seen. I mean, maybe more in business women were doing that before, but it was just um, incredibly empowering to get involved in that way. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I think that's true feminism, isn't it? Is is not blaming anyone. It's really women lifting women up and supporting each other and being there for each other as a resource is the greatest empowerment we can give each other. Yeah, and you know, it's unbelievable to see how these girls that the that step up helps how they progress and when one of the wonderful things about step up as i'm sure you know is that they sort of pro they the girls stay involved they really yes. the organization really stays in touch with them to understand you know how they're doing and how they can help so um you know it's wonderful to see that you're involved in something like that you know, we are, we get a lot of feedback from women that they don't feel that other women are supportive of them. And then you have organizations like Step Up, which is really all about women helping other women. And what are, what are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like there is, um, you know, we did a survey and it said that about 60% of women um, did not feel that other women were supportive of them. And the thing that was a little bit surprising about it is that the younger you were as a woman, the more likely you were to say that other women were supportive of you. So it was not going in the right direction, if that makes sense, since it was the younger girls that were feeling the worst. Do you have any thoughts on, you know, why that is um, that, you know, women maybe don't feel as supported by other women as they should? Um, it's interesting because you know, there's a lot of statistics out there that keep us in a certain vibration. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like to sort of take the statistics and put them aside mm -hmm. and say, are the women in my life supportive? <laughs> are the women in your life supportive? Look how we aligned. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, um, you know, if young women feel that older women are being supportive, go find a bunch of young women that will be supportive. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, you're, if you're in a group of women that isn't, go find one that is. Yeah. That can be men, that can be women, that can be anything in life, right? Mm -hmm. So these sometimes these statistics or these things that women talk about hold us back and they hold us in a certain place or give a, or we use them as an excuse, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. if we are doing what's right for us and we are or are are genuinely helping other women, are genuinely there, are genuinely coming from a place of love and support, then we will attract more of it. So it's mm -hmm. it's just that, anyway, it's a weird view maybe, but it's kind of how I see it is that, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my friends were doing that, you know, post a picture to empower women. And I'm like, you know what, we're already empowered. Why are we, why do we keep saying we're not? Like, I don't understand. It keeps us locked in a certain place it and mm -hmm. if anything say girls we don't need to do this anymore let's do something let's post something else instead you know let's post mm -hmm. something you know supportive of children or other of women but it doesn't have to be so much about empowerment anymore i mean we know i don't have to tell you you're empowered you don't have to tell me mm -hmm. i'm empowered we know right so let's take mm -hmm. that and let's expand on it let's let's change shift the the conversation to even something more expansive what are we going to do now that we're empowered what are you mm -hmm. doing now that you're empowered you know mm -hmm. um as empowered as women we don't need to say it anymore this is the thing <laughs> Men don't walk around going, we're empowered, you know, because it's just kind of accepted. And so I hope that women reach a point where it's just accepted. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, 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 and it is, it's all about love. It's really about women loving other women and realizing that, you know, and fight, look, not every woman is great. Not every man is, you've got to find your group, you know, who you yeah. align with. That's yeah. it. That's really it. The group of women that you really love, you know. Yeah. Well, and it it's it sounds like what you're saying is, you know, you have to be thoughtful about who you surround yourself with. It's one of the most important things that we do as human beings mm -hmm. is find the right people to surround ourselves with because who you surround yourself with is almost who you become as Definitely. as as a person. So I love that. 
I love that idea that you just take said, like, just put the statistics to the side and just focus on what is it that you do and and how can you be better? Because it can be overwhelming if you kind of just look at the statistics. So um, what you know, what is there, if you think about what you do in your life and that kind of keeps you inspired, what, what is, is, you know, is you have a special kind of hobby? Is there anything that you do that kind of helps keep you inspired? Um, yeah, I mean, coffee <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely helps me keep, it's definitely inspiring to me. It gets me out of bed every morning. Um, it's really the simple things, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. For me, it's like getting up in the morning, having a cup of coffee, going for a walk with my dogs, you know, maybe some journaling. Or I have my list of things that I want to do, and I just intuitively say what's right for today. And if it doesn't feel right, I don't do it. And mm -hmm. it eventually does. I Again, like three days later, I'll be like, ah, now's the moment to do that. That feels right. Mm -hmm. So just really having things to do and things you're looking forward to um and it a lot, a lot of it is just finding that place where you feel good mm -hmm. you know it's like through the day am i thinking thoughts that are aligning with my highest good mm -hmm. am i being hard on myself am i thinking loving thoughts about myself and others am i realizing am i in a place of gratitude i think gratitude and i know this is a big thing people are talking about gratitude now so much but it's you know, how often are we saying I'm blessed? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so blessed in this way, or I'm so blessed in that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful that I can do this and I can do that instead of looking at all the things that we're not, you know, let's mm -hmm. look at what we are and, and look at each other mm -hmm. with appreciation for what each, what we're each doing. You know, I think we're moving into a time where, you know, women don't have to act like men where, you know, we can be softer, you know, we can be strong. <laughs> we are strong. We're innately strong. So um, if you approach your day with love and gratitude and appreciation, you know, things are pretty good. Yeah. And I love what you said about loving the place where you are with yourself you know, sort of not because as women, I think we are very hard on ourselves. I think we tend to be very critical of ourselves, which maybe is why we're critical of other women, but we're, we're certainly critical of ourselves. And I think that your point about being kind to yourself and, and kind of be really kind of feeding yourself with with positive thoughts and not always necessary, you know, looking for the, what, I, what isn't there and what you, you know, what you've maybe done wrong is, is, you know, is not necessarily where your head needs to go all the time. What, um, yeah, what exactly. is, the sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to ask you what, best? I was going to move on to another question, but if you wanted to, to, no, to say ahead. something. No, go ahead. I'm fine. What is the, I just was going to ask, um, what is the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Um, you know, my mom, when I was young said, and it's just the first thing that came to mind. So I'm going to go with it is uh, my mom said, people will come and go, but your work will always be there. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of harsh. <laughs> and at the same time, I got where she, what she was saying. It, it wasn't intended to be harsh. You know, it was meant to, which what she meant to say was, you're going to fall in love. You're going to fall in and out of love. You're going to have girlfriends and those girlfriends, some of them will stay in your life forever. Some won't. Um, so have something you're passionate about, have something that you love doing that mm -hmm. will be fulfilling to you and sort of the through line of your life that you yeah. that you find satisfaction doing and i you know i think that was really good advice because mm -hmm. we put so much into relationships and so which we sh you know of course we should i mean into our relationships particularly the ones that are nurturing and and there's that beautiful thing there that we're supporting each other um and i think we should do it even younger kids should start doing things they love younger and parents mm -hmm. hopefully support them doing that starting a business when they're young 
um, mm -hmm. just to know what it's like so that if they do go to business school, they'll they'll have a reference point or they're all, all, they will already have a business in which um, they can reference. You know, I think mm -hmm. it's like anything you can study until the cows come home, but, you know, until you're there doing it, it doesn't really. And I think they're ready. I know I was ready about 14, you know, to have my own business. I was so ready. Mm -hmm. And I remember at nine years old, having a paper route, my mom would drive me around and I would get up at six or AM or whatever and fold. I couldn't wait. You know, they see us doing it, right? We see mm -hmm. our parents doing it. And we think, oh, I want to do that. I want to make money. I want to, you mm -hmm. know, have a business, something to do. And they have to wait and wait and wait. And then we yeah. wonder why they're like sulking mm -hmm. and think we're weird, you know, because mm -hmm. we're just sitting there going, no, 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 there's a program here. We all have to go along with this program. We can't, if I go wait, my friends are going to think I'm a loser. If my kid doesn't go to college, I've got, you know, I've got to live up to so much in society. Mm -hmm. So I think it's yeah. part of the thing that we're seeing crumble now is just mm -hmm. this idea that we all need to fit in and go along with the program, which, mm -hmm. you know, for some may be good, but for some it's not. Right. Absolutely. And as someone who went to business school, I can tell you, they don't teach you that much about actually running a business. They don't. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not really focused on that, but that's, and so I love, I love that advice that you got from, from your mom. What is next for you? What, what's, what's coming up that you're um, excited for? I think whatever is for my highest good, that's what I, that's what I really meditate on is just please align me with whatever is for my highest good. And that is aligned with love and, um, and a future that is about uh, humanity really respecting each other and honoring each other and mother earth and the animals. And um, where we live in a society that's um, more balanced, you know, for all of us. And that's, mm -hmm what I think is going on. I know there's a lot of other things at play here, but on sort of a spiritual level, I think that's what's going on right now is, is realizing what's important, you know, again, a reminder, like a little bit of a reminder. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. Really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And uh, I hope uh, you get enjoy, get to enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Thanks, Elisa.